Okay. Uh, I, I have an interesting question. I'm, I never had a chance to do this with you before. Uh, but uh, what, in your opinion, was the play of the game? <laughs> I would say um, I thought Bazak's goal was an important goal for us. We had, we had, I thought we had a good first period, and we, we had definitely had a lot more shots than they did. Uh, I think it was 16 to 2 or something like that, and, and we hadn't scored. So we were pressing a little bit. We were playing well, but we needed that first goal. So for him to get the first goal, and it was nice for him in his first game. He had an excellent game uh, for him to get that first goal and kind of uh, we were squeezing our sticks a little bit, pushing, and the last little bit goals have been a little tough to come by for us, so him to get that first goal, and then we got the second one on the power play, uh, gave us a little bit of breathing room. Okay. Now, uh, I don't want you to see this yet, but you, you probably already know, but if, if uh, the Talos team, by the way, picked the stars tonight, and uh, I want to know, if, if you were picking the stars, who the three stars would be, and we'll compare with uh, your, your uh, selection with ours. Okay, I, I didn't see the stars first off. Um, okay. I thought Teddy Stevens had a really good game. He, uh, he had three assists. Uh, he's learning to stride and not glide, we tell him all the time. When Teddy gets the puck, he tends to get the puck and kind of slalom rather than pick up speed. He's 18, he's learning. As he does that and he, he, and he picks up speed, there's some separation between him and the checkers. And, and when he's got time, he's got such good hockey sense, he's finding guys and we're seeing him really develop into, into a nice player. Um, I thought he was good. I thought Jodwin and Savard both uh, were very, very good. Um, they're, they're, they're very underrated and uh, um, as good as Mark Barberio is and as, as, as good as Brandon Gormley is, there's lots of nights that uh, Savard and Jodwin are, are just as good and uh, that's not a knock against the first pair, that's a credit to, this, to, to Jodes and, and to, to, Mark, to David Savard. Um, he could give the goalie a star every time you get a shutout, I thought he made a couple big ones near the end but uh, probably would go with, could have given Tommy Jolie, I think, a star. Yeah. Played very, very well. It's hard f when you've played three and a half years for only one organization and, you, and you're a quiet, unassuming guy like Tommy Jolie is. Probably, I know when talking with him this morning, it was a difficult game for him to play, but uh, he, he changed sweaters pretty quickly and you could see he was all Wildcats out there and that, that's harder to do than, than, than it looks. Uh, I thought he was good. I liked our team effort. I mean, we had 50 shots and, and, and we were able to play four lines and, and, and I thought did a very good job of, of pressure and, uh, pressure and uh, Bathurst. So I don't know who the three stars are. You'll have to tell okay. me how he did. So let's see if we get, if we get the coach's vote of confidence in the selection of the three stars. Number three was Scott Brennan. We thought he played an outstanding game. He had an assist. Uh, David Savard was number two uh, with a goal and an assist. But uh, tonight the Yukana was just absolutely outstanding with three assists. So we gave Ted Stevens the first star. You must know more about hockey than people think you do. <laughs> I knew something was coming. I didn't quite know what. Now uh, you put two bald-headed guys together, they really have a lot of fun. <laughs> Seriously, let's, <laughs> let's talk for a minute or two about the adjustments now that have to be made and that you are making with uh, Bizak coming back and, and the uh, Jolie trade. Yeah, well, first off, Tommy Jolie is, is getting comfortable now. Uh, and like we said, three and a half years with the same team. He joined our team in a three and three weekend, didn't have a chance to practice. Uh, and we played a couple of pretty good teams in that three and three. He had a week of practice, he had a chance to catch his breath. Uh, we have a lot of structure in our game here. He had a chance to sit down with the coaches and, and with some line mates and, and, and look, watch some video as to the things we try and do here. Um, I thought he was very good. And uh, Adam Bazak has had international flights twice in the last couple of weeks, uh, played a grueling World Junior Tournament. I thought he was excellent, and uh, uh, he's going to be a really nice addition for us. So uh, he's, he speaks perfect English. He loves Moncton. The kids. He, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of things that he he doesn't have to adjust to because he was here last year. Uh, but he's not your typical European. He's gritty. Sticks his nose in. You saw when Brownie got hurt, and Teddy had a little tussle there. Uh, Bazak didn't blink and jump right in. And, and there's not a whole lineup of Euros that that do that. So uh, he was accepted back into the group pretty quickly. He was a popular kid when he was here, and it, it's great to see the adjustment go so smoothly. Okay, uh, that answers the question very well. Uh, before you came out, one of the one of the uh, folks in the crowd tonight uh, asked me, and I didn't have the answer. Y you probably do. Uh, what happened to Matt Brown? Uh, we watched the video between periods, and I, the reason I, one of the reasons I was late here, I was talking to Brownie. Uh, he just kind of got there was a battle on the boards, and he just twisted on his leg the wrong way, and and uh, uh, when you looked at it on the, on the video, you kind of winced, you know. So. Um, 
early prognosis is it's not torn, but it's probably badly sprained. Uh, they'll know more in the next couple of days. He's four to six weeks for sure. So that'll be a big loss for our team. Oh, wow. Okay, that's that's uh, not the kind of news you want to hear because he, he really has played extremely well. Uh, he took a hit, I think, in the first period, and he, he was wincing a bit. But then when he went down, and we knew you could tell the minute he went down, as I'm sure you knew, he was in trouble. Yeah, and he's, he's the good thing, I guess, if there is a good thing. He's in tremendous shape, and he takes real good care of himself. He's as devoted and as committed to his fitness and his hockey as you could ever ask for. So uh, if there's anybody who would have a chance of making an early return or anybody that will come back and, and be ready to go, it'll be Matt Brown. He's, uh, he's in tremendous shape. He's really strong for 17 years old. You'll see when he gets close to a puck, he doesn't lose too many battles. He's, he's just hockey strong. And uh, he'll, um, he'll be as diligent as you could ask him to be, uh, and he'll be hungry to get back here. The other thing is, Danny, before we throw it open, uh, that you have lots of reserve uh, with a key player like, like Brown going out. Yeah, I mean, we're going to miss Matt Brown. You, it doesn't matter who you have in the lineup. when you. He's got 17 goals. He's 17 years old. He's on his way to a 30-goal season and just really hitting his stride. So we're going to miss him for sure. Uh, Devin McCausland's had a great season thus far. He's uh, biting at the bit to get back in. Uh, we probably, if it was playoffs, you would have squeezed him in today. Uh, we'll bring him back probably either Sunday or, or uh, Wednesday, depends on uh, on what the doctors say. But he's close to coming back, and he has a bad shoulder. And, and when you're a little guy, you got to play like a bulldog, and he has to play with a chip on his shoulder like any small guy does. So you have to be healthy if he's if he's in there and he's and he's and he's not healthy. Uh, and he's not sticking his nose and he can't do his job, so we want to make sure he was 100% healthy. So we'll put uh, Devin back into the lineup, and uh, we've got good depth up front and, and, and a pretty strong blue line, and, and uh, you know we're hoping that uh, uh, our depth will pay off because if you're going to go deep in the playoffs, you're going to lose guys along the way. You've got to play every second night for eight weeks to get to the tournament, then you've got to play six games in nine days of the tournament. So that's a lot of hockey in a short period of time, and you need depth and to, to carry you through. Okay. Uh, let's throw it open for a couple of questions from the floor. Yes, right here. And then the gentleman behind you. Uh, do the boys like their new bus? Is the question. Not as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is the Pope Catholic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a, the, the bus. Uh, Mr. Irving did a great job. And uh, we tried for a long They They said for a Mr. Irving said the team, I think, 13 years. Yeah. If I'm so 13. Anyway. Um, People pecked away at him for a long time to get a bus, and, and it was a tough sell. Uh, and, and one of the things that Donnie Matheson could do is Donnie was a salesman. And Donnie, when he wanted to convince somebody of something, whether it was a player to come here or a trade we needed to make or something, if you, Donnie had a persistent, persuasive way with everybody. So we, we, said, we sat down with Donnie last year and said, Donnie, you got to go to work on the bus. So anyway, uh, he, he, um, he's, God rest his soul, he's smooth. And he worked and worked and worked till finally he convinced Mr. Irving that this bus would be a great idea. And, and one of Donnie's favorite lines, it only costs a little more to go first class. And uh, uh, Mr. Irving went first class. And the bus has, uh, most buses have 56 seats. I think this one has 36. There's lots of leg room. There's uh, wireless internet. Uh, there's a microwave and a kind of a food thing at the back. There's satellite TV on the way back from PEI. We watch the NHL game, the late night game. Uh, there's four seats up front for, for whoever gets those seats uh, <laughs> that are kind of lazy boy seats like you're in the first class in the airplane. And then the other seats for the, the rest of them uh, are, there's lots of leg room versus your regular bus and they're wider than usual. So uh, it's awesome. So uh, for a guy like me that's been on a lot of buses, I was in Sault Ste. Marie for six years. Uh, and, and did a lot of busting in the OHL, and we do our fair share in this league. Uh, it was nice for us. The other thing that's great is there's eight TV monitors, uh, and there's XM radio, satellite radio. The kids can listen to the radio with the headphones on. What we can do up front is we can, the coaches can take our four chairs, kind of turn them towards each other like a circle. There's a chair, there's a table that pops in the middle, and we can watch this video up front on the screen while we're breaking the game down, and we can show video to the kids on all eight screens, or they can watch a movie on theirs. It's got all, and we're just learning about all the bells and whistles. This thing is a beauty. Uh,